On this part, you are going to learn how to design the navigation bar and also how to update the content for the footer. Here on the navigation bar, we are going to add the items here on the left. And then on the right, after you log out, you do see the, the login and the register buttons. So let us go to Visual Studio and see it in action. Now, here we said that when you want to modify the navigation bar or the footer, you can just go to the Solution Explorer and the file for these two components is the layout file. In here, you can see that after the head, we have the body, and then inside the body, we have the header tag. And then inside the header tag, we have the nav tag. Now, the nav is used for the navigation bar. And then inside this div, you can see that we have two list items. The first one is the home, and the second one is the privacy. And then down below, after the header, we said that we have this render body, which is like the placeholder where all the components are rendered whenever we change the URL or we change the route. And then down here, you have a footer. And in this footer, we have just some default text. Now, what I'm going to do in here is that I'm just going to remove the existing content. And then inside a span, I'm going to add the classes MB3, MB, and then MD zero and also text muted. These are bootstrap classes. And then inside this tag, I'm going to add a new tag, which is going to be an A link. So A, and then this is going to also have the class text muted. Then the value or the text for this A link is going to be subscribe to my YouTube channel. And here I'm going to provide the link, so href, which is an attribute for A, so for the A tags, HTTPS, and then in here, YouTube, and then C.NET how. Now let us scroll up. In here, what we are going to do is that we are going to first remove the privacy. And then down here, I'm just going to format the code. And what you see in here is an A link, and this A link does have the ASP area, ASP controller, and ASP action attributes. So the A tag in here, in this case, is an anchor tag helper. Now, a tag helper in ASP.NET Core MVC is a feature that does simplify the generation of HTML elements within razor views by providing a way to add server side logic and attributes in a more HTML-like manner. So from here, if I just remove like all the custom properties, you can see that the color now is different and this is just an A or hyperlink. But if I add back all the ASP dash properties or attributes, then this becomes an anchor tag help. ASP.NET MVC does also offer other tag helpers like the form tag helper that we're going to use in the login and the register views, the image tag helper, the partial tag helper, etc. So in here now we have the home. Let us create another navigation item. I'll just copy the existing one and then just paste in here. And we are going to name this one all links. Then we're going to have one more. And this is going to be named users. Now the all links can be part of the same controller as the home page. So you can have in the home page another action where you can display all the links, or you can use the URL controller that we have created. If you want the user to be redirected to a different controller, then in here you need to define that when the user clicks all links, then I want the user to navigate to the URL controller and the action is going to be the index. And then when they click the users link, I want them to be redirected to a new controller, let's say auth controller, or it can be users controller or authentication controller. We have not created this controller yet, so I'll just set in here the value to be auth. And then the 
action can be users. And then after we have the menu items here on the left, we're going to also create the buttons on the right. We have the login and the register buttons. So now I'm just going to collapse this div. And after this div, I'm going to add an A link. So A. So this is just a link, but then I add in here ASP controller. This becomes now an anchor tag helper. So now it's a tag helper. ASP controller. The ASP controller is going to be off. And then whenever the user wants to log in, I want to redirect the user to the login action. So ASP action is going to be login. Now inside here, let me just pull the code up here. I can also add some bootstrap classes or so class and then BTN, BTN outline success. These classes do give that green border that they have. So when it's BTN outline success, it's going to have a green border. And then MY2, so a margin on the Y axis, so up and down of two. Then MY SM zero and then btn login now down here i'm just going to add the login text let me just copy this value and then down here i'm going to use the same controller when i want to register a user but i want to call a different action which is going to be the register action and then the value is going to be just register Now, if you want, or if you want to have a clear name in here, you can change the auth to authentication. So whenever we create a controller to work with the user authentication, we're going to name that controller the authentication controller. Now, let me just save the changes and run the app. So in here we can see that we have the home, we have the all links and the users. We still need to update the name. And here on the right, we need to add some space between the login and the register buttons and also change the color for the register button. Down here, we can see that the footer is already updated. So we don't need to add any changes in here. Then I'll just go back to Visual Studio one more time. In here, I'm going to change the color of the register button from BTN outline success to BTN outline primary. And then between the A tags, I'm going to add a span. And to this span, I'm just going to add a style. So I'm just adding some inline CSS and the padding is going to be five pixels. Or we can just add an ID to this span, let's say ID, and then let us set the ID value to be just the space span. Copy the value, I'll just go to the custom CSS file. I'll scroll down in here. And down here, I'm going to add hashtag and then space span. And then just add this value. Control X, save, remove it from here. Let us scroll up to the name. And then in here, let us change the name from shortly to shortly or even remove the O from here as well. Now in here, let us scroll down to the register button one more time because we did update the bootstrap class, but we need to also update the custom class. So let us change this from BTN login to BTN register. And if you go to the CSS, you're going to see that for the BTN register, we do set a different color. And whenever we hover on this button, then we set the color to this orange color. Let us save all the changes and then click this fire icon in here, which is for hot reload. Let's go to the browser. And now in here, you can see that we have the name in here. We have the menu items. And here on the right, we have the login and the register buttons. Now, 
this is all for this part. On the next part, we're going to create the controller and we're going to create the action and the view for all links.